You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio on Blog Talk Radio, iHeartRadio, Speaker.com, and Live 365 with 24-7 Gospel Music. All of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646 478 Zero six six zero. Again, that number is six four six four seven eight zero six six zero. Go visit and like our Facebook page when Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also, be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. And now, Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones. Welcome everyone to the Lifeline broadcast. I pray that everybody has had a good day today, and I thank God for you being able to dial in or click into the link to be able to join me tonight. I am just so very excited for this opportunity. Uh, I am excited, (laughs) and uh, a lot of times they tease me about I'm always saying I'm excited, but I am excited tonight. For I'm always excited about the things that God does and which God orchestrates. So I thank God for this opportunity tonight. I thank you for the open door. And also I'd like to thank Reverend Ray Rose and Reverend Pat Randall, the administrators for the When Christians Speak blog radio talk show, for this opportunity uh, that will allow me to share the word of God and to use it as a practicum in living in the kingdom. And so once again, I welcome each one of you, and I pray tonight that you will hear something that will cause you to to stand up to be counted among the ones that God has called for a time such as this. Now, since this is my uh, first broadcast, there are some upfront things that I want to share before the word goes forth. I have the uh, awesome privilege of being the senior pastor of one of the most awesome churches around, which is Rehoboth Family Life Center. And the reason I say one of the awesome churches around is because of the people. Uh, The people there are so supportive they're loving, they're hardworking, and they're destined-bound people. So if the people from Rehoboth are on the line tonight, I just want to give you a shout-out. Hey, Rehoboth, I love you guys, and thank you so much for your support and your hard work in allowing us to be all that God has called us to be and that we can be a beacon light and we also can be the bride that God is allowing us to be for his people. I also would like to thank Pastor Irma McKnight, who is our executive pastor, for everything that she brings to the table and how she is such a vital part of the ministry. Rehoboth Family Life Center, uh, we are located at 17900 Queen Anne Road in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, 20774. And at this time, I'd like to extend an invitation for anyone looking for a church home or just want to come out to worship with us. Uh, Our service starts at 10 o'clock, and God has just been blessing, loving on us, correcting us, and teaching us how to be kingdom dwellers. And I guess you're wondering, you say, okay, Rehoboth, what is, you know, how did you guys get that name? Well, Rehoboth is actually biblical. It's out of the book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 22. And this is where Isaac was going back to uh, dig up the wells from his father, Abraham, and what he did was he went to the first well, and the first well, there was some opposition. He got to the second well, and there was opposition. But by the time he got to the third well, there was no opposition. 
and this is what he said in 2622. He says, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. Well, Rehoboth is that place, that place where people can come in. They can come in and be healed. They can come in and be loved. They can discover their spiritual gifts and their purpose, and then they're given the opportunity to exercise their gifts and grow in what God has purposed for their lives. The worst thing is to have gifts and you never get an opportunity to discover what they are or you never get the opportunity to work them out. So at Rehoboth, this is a place where we, we come together as a family of believers and we just love on one another and we get before God and we push one another. At least I push. They say I push. And I do. I'm a pusher. That's, that's part of the, the call of my life is to push people because somebody pushed me and, and pushed the gifts out of me so that I can be all that God has called me to be. And I said, God, if you give me that opportunity to be able to push in someone else's life to cause them to be what you called them to be, then, Father, I will thank you for it. So at Rehoboth, we get that opportunity to push. If you got a gift, I'm going to tap into it. If you got a ministry, I'm going to tap into it. So come out and hang out with us if you get the opportunity. Like I said, if you're looking for a church home, you can come and hang out with us. If you just want to come out on a Sunday morning, come out as well. We also... We also have Bible study via teleconferencing that we do every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. And uh, that telephone number, I'm going to give that to you. I hope you guys are are taking out a pencil or notepad or something because I'm going to be giving some information out tonight that I want you to be able to jot down. So the teleconferencing number for every Tuesday at 8 o'clock is 712-432-3100. And the access code is 386279. We also are having now, this is, I think, week 10 that we're doing 5 a.m. prayer. And you can tune in on Thursday morning at 5. It's from 5 to 5.30 where we're just coming before the Lord and acknowledging that, that he is our priority. And we're giving a jump start for our day. So join us from 5 to 5.30. And trust me, if you come out and, and we get in prayer, the rest of your day is going to go good because you, you're establishing the fact that you know who you are in God and you're telling God that you are my priority and I'm giving you first dibs in my day before we get started in our day. So join us at Tuesday night at 8 o'clock for Bible study and Thursday morning at 5 a.m. for prayer. Now, the name of the broadcast, as they said, they announced this, it's called Lifeline. You're probably wondering, why Lifeline? But how many of us know that that we serve a God that is such a strategic God, that God knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. God knew where we would be. God knew the purpose of our lives. He knew what he had for us to be. And it's just so awesome to me that God would allow me to write a book. Uh, It's been about five years now, and and the name of the book is Lifeline When God Speaks. Did y'all hear me? Lifeline, when God speaks, that's five years ago that I wrote the book, and then when I began to ask God, what would he have me to call this broadcast, and he said, Lifeline. I said, God, you are so awesome that you gave that back then, and now you're bringing it forward to be able to use it for a time such as this. So Lifeline, when God speaks, is a book that that I wrote that he gave me that uh, it's actually a, a were a book of encouragement. Actually, it's, it's, it's things that God told me when I was going through some situations or circumstances or just to encourage my heart, just to tell me that he loved me and that everything was going to be okay. So the, the book is, is a book of encouragement. Um, I'm not a psalmist. I can't sing except I sing to the Lord because I love the Lord. But I write music as well. So in the book there are some songs that I wrote, about four songs that I wrote, and uh, we're going to be coming out. They've already did a, a CD with the four songs. So I'm going to be able to sell the CD soon along with the book. Now, you're probably asking, okay, where can I get the book? Well, the book, you can get the book from Amazon.com. You could get it from Barnes & Noble. You could get it from Kingdom Living Publishing, which is my publisher, or wherever books are sold. And you also can contact me directly uh, and let me know that you would like to, to purchase the book, and I can send the book to you. And I'll be giving you my contact information uh, at the end of the broadcast. Now, Lifeline. Lifeline is going to be a, a instrument, a broadcast, where I just believe that we're, we're in the dispensation of time that we need to hear from God. We need to stay in the Word. 
We need to direct our lives according to what we hear and what God says to us. It's so important that we get a word from God. We hear what God says so that we can live by what he says. Remember over in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was being tempted by Satan, but that he didn't do anything or say anything that was cute. He He didn't do any of that fancy stuff. All he did was he spoke the word. It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So here on this Lifeline broadcast, we are going to dub into the word, and we're going to make it practical, practical by which to change our lives to live by. This broadcast will be uh, every first Monday of the month, and it's going to be at 7 o'clock. And I'm asking that if you would just let other people know that Lifeline is, has been burst out today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am so excited that it has been burst out right now, and you guys are privy to the birthing of Lifeline, where God is, I believe, is going to use it mightily just to bless people, be able to have us to look at ourselves, and then change some things that we can be the best that God has called us to be. One other thing I want to mention also is there is a chat room. If you have went in through the link, there is a way to get into the chat room. And in the chat room, you're able to uh, give prayer requests, comments, or any questions that you may have. And uh, Reverend Ray Rose is manding the studio. I thank God for him because he's taking care of that technical side, and I'll just come on and do this part. So he's the one that's going to be in the chat room. And so if you have any questions or prayer requests, or comments that you would like to make, and you can get into the chat room. At the end of the message, he's going to relay that information to me, and uh, I get a chance to pray for you guys or answer any questions uh, that you may have. So if you can get into the, to the chat room, uh, you can leave your concerns right there. Amen? Amen. So those are the things I just wanted to kind of give you a little spill of who I am and what I do and the fact that this is a time that God is allowing Lifeline to be burst out. I am so grateful to God. You know, when God speaks, you know, I think about my life and, and all the things from the very beginning uh, the Lord spoke to me, and he said to me, he said, I want you to, to take a journey with me. I remember early on he says, I want you to take a journey with me. And he says, in this journey, it's going to take you to many ports, and this, this journey is going to take you to many stops. He said, but I know exactly where I'm taking you at. And he says, and because I know where I'm taking you at, he says, because I've already gone ahead of you, I've mapped out your course, I know where the stop signs are, I know where the go signs are, and I'm going to walk you. I've already circled back. I'm going to grab your hand, and I'm going to walk you through it. Glory to God. And I, I wouldn't take anything from my journey. I would not take anything from my journey, the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, the wins, and the losses, but it has crafted me and made me who God has called me to be. And God has never failed me. He's never left me. Even in the hard times, it was, it was God's presence in my life that caused me to know that even when I didn't think it was going to be okay, but he promised me, daughter, I got you and everything going to be all right. So I thank him that even today as I sit here tonight, I am just so excited and and just in awe of all that God has said that he was going to do in my life, and now he's allowing first the book and now the broadcast to be birthed out. And I know even with that, there's more that God is going to do, and for that I am grateful to God. I'm I'm honored to be able to be used by God, and I'm grateful for all that he's doing, and I'm glad. I'm glad everybody's on the line tonight. You're a part of the birthing, and you're a part of what God is doing in the, in the kingdom. So we're going to go ahead and, and get started tonight in the word, and we're going to just see where it takes us tonight. And I bless God for that tonight. When um, the title of my message tonight is, is Needing to Get and Stay Free. Needing to Get and to Stay Free. Like I said, you know, when we think about God, that we serve such a thorough, and strategic God who knows everything about us, and he wants the best for us. But let me, before I even get into the message tonight, let me just open up in prayer. So, Father, we thank you tonight, and we bless you, God, and we honor you, Lord God, and we give you praise, and we give you thanksgiving, God, and we give you glory. 
God, we thank you for your loving kindness, O oh God, and your tender mercies, Lord God. God, we thank you for all the things that you're doing, God, and, and all the things that are still yet to come, God. We thank you that there is nobody like you, God. We thank you, Lord God. God, I bless you tonight, God, for, for this broadcast, God. I, I thank you, Lord God, for lifeline, God, that you're birthing out into the earth today, God. I thank you, Lord God. And I pray that even now, in the name of Jesus, God, that this word, God, that you're calling, God, will be a blessing to those, God, that you're sending this way, God. I pray that night, God, that somebody's life will change, God. I pray tonight that somebody would understand, God, who they are to you and who you are to them, God. I pray that somebody would even ask, what must I do to be saved? So, God, I thank you tonight, God. God, I rest in you tonight, God. I pray that, Father, that you would word my mouth, God. I pray that, Father, God, I not alter the purity of your word, oh, God, but I'll speak what thus says the Lord tonight. I pray that, God, that even now, Father, that you would give your people a listening ear, God, and that, Father, that we would not just be hearers of the word, God, but we would be doers as well, God. God, we thank you that you love us with an everlasting love, oh, God, that you're always moving, God. God, to cause us, Father God, to grab hold to you, O oh God, and for you to be our priority, O oh God. It's you, God, that we live and breathe and have our very existence, God. Oh, God, so I commit this broadcast back to you tonight, God. Be glorified, O oh God. Be glorified, Father. Be glorified, God. Touch the hearts and the minds of your people, God, even now in the name of Jesus, God. I pray, God, meet the need of the people tonight, O oh God. I pray that nobody leaves off this broadcast. Broadcast, God, the same way, God, but they'll hear something, God, knowing that, God, that they've been in your presence, God, that they'll hear something, God, knowing that, Father God, that everything's going to be all right. So, God, I thank you tonight, God. I take it as an honor and a privilege, God, to be used by you, Lord God. And I submit myself, God, unto you as a living sacrifice, God. My life doesn't belong to me, oh, God, but it belongs to you, God. And for that, my Lord, I am grateful, God. I'm so very grateful, so very grateful, so very grateful. Speak, God, that your people may live, God. Speak that your people's lives may be changed, God. Speak tonight, Lord God. Speak, God. Speak, Lord. Speak, God. Speak, God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Ha, yea, God. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Thou art welcome on this broadcast tonight. Thou art welcome to speak. Thou art welcome to minister to your people. Thou art, art, art welcome to touch your people tonight. Heal somebody tonight, God. Deliver somebody tonight, God. God, touch someone's emotions tonight, God. Rearrange thought patterns tonight, God. God, give answers tonight, oh God. Let them know, God, that the thing that they've been waiting on, God, that you are the answer for, God. Oh God, let minds be changed, God. Hearts be renewed, God. Tonight, oh God, tonight, God, tonight, God, tonight, God, tonight, I call on your name, tonight, God, and let it be so, God, and let it be so, God, oh, glory, let it be so, God, let it be so, Lord God, hallelujah, God, let it be so, God, let it be so upon this line tonight, oh God, this broadcast, God, let it be so, God, let it be so, Lord, let it be so, God, we thank you. God, and we bless you and we honor you, Lord God. Even now the more, even now the more, even now the more. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, he's a mighty God tonight. <laughs> oh, glory. He's a mighty God tonight. He's a mighty God tonight. And there's nobody like him. And, and I bless his name tonight. That we indeed serve such a thorough and strategic God who, who knows everything about us and who wants the best for us in every area of our lives. Just think about it, that in the garden, from the garden up until, until the crucifixion, that God was always putting something in place, that he always wanted to have a relationship with his people. And, and from the garden and until the crucifixion, he said that I'm going to send the best of me, that I'm going to embed myself in the wound of Mary, and I'm going to come forth as, as my son Jesus, and, and then I'm going to have him go to the cross to sacrifice, make the ultimate sacrifice, not like they had to do year by year, but, but this sacrifice, glory to God, only had to make it one time so that we could have audience with him. Even tonight, we could have audience with him that he wants to speak to us and he wants to teach us and, and he wants us to know that he loves us so very much and, and that he has 
He has the abundant life for us. Over in John 10.10, 10, it says that, that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he says, but I have come, I have come, I have come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. So we're in a position tonight that those of us that are in the kingdom and those who are not, we're going to get the opportunity to get that done tonight as well. So before I get too excited, too excited with the word of God, I want to say this one thing. I am a preacher, but I am a teacher as well. And I believe that my part in the Lifeline broadcast is to for us to dove into the word of God, to see what God is saying, and then to make it practical. I, I'm a firm believer that the word should not just be a history lesson, that the word should not be just something that we read, but the word should be something that we live. The word should be instrumental in our lives for us to become all that God has called us to become. So what I'm asking you to do tonight before we actually get into the word is grab your notebook, your, your iPad, your pencil, your paper, whatever you take your notes on, because I want you to, to there's a self-examination and part of this message that I want you to do tonight. Plus, I want you to jot down some scriptures that you'll be able to go back and read and study and ask God to give you further revelation of the things that I'm going to give tonight. Okay, like I said, I'm a teacher as well as a preacher. And so I want to, to get in the Word so that we can find out where we are, whose we are, and that we can be all that God has called us to be. So once again, the title of the message tonight is Needing to Get and to Stay Free. Needing to Get and to Stay Free. Tonight what I want to do is I want to talk about several areas of our lives that hinder us from going forward to purpose and destiny areas that we need to be freed up in, and then how to stay free. I want to call these areas that get in the way toxic, toxic areas, those things that cause us and hinder us from going forth and being the best that God has called us to be. Over in the book of Jeremiah, I believe it's Jeremiah 29, 11, that he says that I know the thoughts that I think towards you, and they're thoughts of peace and not of evil, that he may give us an expected end. So there, there is purpose, hallelujah, there is purpose and there is destiny in our lives. If God has allowed you to grace the earth, it's not to be upon the earth for nothing. It's not to be upon the earth and not be an instrument in his hand. The problem comes in is that when we come into the earth and we get entangled with the affairs of, the, of, the, of our lives and the affairs of the world, and then there's things that just get in the way of us becoming all that God has purposed us to be. We are called to be the light of the world. We are called to be the salt of the earth. We are called to be ambassadors of the Almighty God. We are called to cause the kingdom of God to come upon the earth that our lives can be different than those that we encounter. So what, what happens? What, what happens? What prevents us from going forth and even knowing what our purpose and our destiny is? Because you have one, and I declare and even decree even now that the purpose for why you were created, your destiny for what God has called you to be, that it shall come to pass. When we submit ourselves to the Almighty God, that those things that get in the way, that they will be moved out of the way so that we can be all that he's called us to be. So that's what we're going to do. Come on, all. We're going to just do a little bit of work tonight. We're going to talk about those toxic areas, those things that hinder us from going forth. Now, when you think of the word toxic, toxic means containing or being poisonous material, especially when capable of causing death or serious debilitation, extreme, harsh, malicious, or harmful. Now, we're talking about those things that, that will cause us not to be able to go forth, those things that will cause us to to be harmful, will cause harmful results in our lives. Now, when we think of toxic, at least when I think of toxic, I think about the body. When the body doesn't get rid of toxins, stress is put on the organs of our body, and guess what? It can cause death. So our body is, is wired. Isn't that awesome? You know, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God has, has, has patterned our bodies to work a certain way. You know, we have our hair, our scalp. We have our skin, we have our bones, we have our cells, we have our blood, 
We have the heart. We have our liver. We have the pancreas. We have. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Nobody can do this like God can do this. And so even, think about this, even the body will also let you know when something is out of order. Just for instance, like, uh, and I use this as an example in church, that, that have you ever had like just a hair in your eye and a small piece of hair in your eye and because it didn't belong there, it caused an irritating feeling that you had to just get that out. You know, back in the day they would ask people, like, can you blow in my blow in my eye? And when I said that at church, everybody was like, no, we ain't saying that anymore about people blowing in your eye. They said they'll just rub it or put some drops in their eye. But anything that's in a place in our body that, that doesn't belong there, the body will single signal to you that something is not right and you need to pay attention to that. I remember an example to my son, uh, my youngest son, Played, uh, played football all the way from Little League up into college. And I remember him being in college, and he got a really hard hit. And his body, they thought maybe his arm might have been broke. And so what happened was his bone, bone started to, to recreate itself in his arm, but his trainer said that your arm, is not, your arm is not broke. You just have a bad bruise. He said, but there's bone that's starting to grow in that place because the body thought that it was broke because it was such a deep bruise. But then what happens is he says, well, what's going to happen to this extra bone? He says, well, when the body realizes that the arm is not broke, it will automatically begin to shove off that bone, and the bone will dissolve. Isn't that awesome? Hallelujah. We are fiercely and wonderfully made that the body knows what it needs to do in order to repair itself even sometimes. But back to when, when, so when, when, when there's toxic in our body because our body is not giving, get, getting rid of those toxins, it could cause our body to be under a lot of stress, and it could even cause death because now it puts more stress on the other organs to be able to keep us alive. Now, when I think about toxic things, I think about materials such as lead paint. Remember back in the day when you would hear a lot of small children having lead poison? And that is because the older houses prior to 1978, it had paint that was toxic paint. It had lead in it, which caused illnesses, especially to children. There were even um, household items and toys that were made prior to 1976. And these were things also that were made with lead and caused, can cause brain damage, can cause sickness, and all kind of diseases. And when you think of, of toxins, have you ever, like, just rode around and you've seen signs, you these yellow signs with black markings and all kind of other signs that indicate to us that there is toxic waste things. But isn't it, isn't it interesting that there are signs that tell us to be aware of the toxic wastes that are outside of us, but what is the thing that helps us to know, ha, ha, yay, God, that helps us to know about the toxic things that are within us? Glory to God. Now, the, no, nothing can tell us about those toxic things except the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. So that's, that's what we're going to rely on tonight. As I begin to sit before the Lord, he said that there are toxic things within us, that, that we have toxic thoughts, we have toxic relationships, we have toxic action and behavior, and that what does it do? It slows up and kills our hopes, our purpose, and our destiny. So we, we need to look at that tonight. So this is what I want you to do. If you got your papers out, and I'll tell you this is going to be, we're going to interact a little bit here tonight. What I want you to do is I want you to, to get your paper out, and I'm going to talk a little bit about toxic thoughts, toxic relationships, toxic behaviors, and then we're going to talk about, okay, once we get past that and we've identified some things, how do we, how, how do we remain free? So as I'm, I'm giving you some examples and some scriptures about toxic thoughts, and toxic relationships, and toxic actions, I want you to be true to yourself and say, okay, do I see myself there? Because I want to get out of this thing. I don't want to be in the place where I'm hindering my own self or being hindered by these things because I want to be all that God has called me to be. I want to walk in destiny, and I want to walk in purpose. So let's, let's do this tonight. You're going you're gonna to take notes. And you're going to self-examine yourself. So the first thing, area of toxic, we want to talk about tonight. We want to talk about toxic thoughts. And toxic, toxic thoughts are 
those things when, you know, when we're constantly are in a worry mode of all the, you know, the what ifs, can that work? I really can't do that. What are people going to think? And you think about, okay, they said it, and because they said it, it must be true. We think about, we start becoming fearful. We become doubtful. I wonder if this is going to happen. I, I wonder if God forgot about me. And, and, and I know, I think this is what he said, but I'm not too sure. And so we, we become back and forth and back and forth in our minds. And, and that's the place where the enemy has his greatest work is in our thought pattern. Because anytime something becomes a reality, it becomes a thought first. So we have to get to the place that we are identifying. Is that the place that's keeping me back? Is that the place that the enemy is using against me? Are my toxic thoughts getting in the way that I can't be all that God has called me to be? I can't write that book because I don't think I can write the book. I, I'm not writing those songs because I really don't think I have the ability to do that. Am I not applying for that job because they said that I needed to have this much experience in that degree? Am I, am I, am I not going forward? Am I not moving out of state maybe that God is saying that some of us may have to relocate and I can't do that because I don't know anybody there and I don't have a job there and I don't have the, the money to go there. But let me say this, that anything, hallelujah, that God has purposed for your life, anything that God has asked you to do, that it is not up to you to figure out how to do it, but it's up to you to believe the almighty God that what God has said and what God has asked you to do, that God will do it and it will come to pass. So we have to get to a place that we're working, working past those toxic thoughts. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, glory. Anything that he asks me to do, that I can do it. So we've got to get past that. So write on your paper. If you're the person that's been having those toxic thoughts, I want you to write under toxic thoughts, no more. Hallelujah. No more. No more. Tonight. Tonight. No more. I am going to get in this word, and I'm going to believe God for what he said. I'm not going to allow the enemy to work me over overtime so that I can be all that God has called me to be. Because when we allow those thoughts to remain in our thought pattern, what happens is that it becomes toxic and causes us to become hopeless. It becomes, we become stagnated, we procrastinate, and we are stuck. And years of our lives passes us by, and purpose and destiny dies within us. Tonight, no more. Hallelujah. No more. We're going to say no more tonight. No more of those thoughts. Those toxic thoughts. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to be all that God has called me to be. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Right there. So how do we, how do we deal with those toxic thoughts? It says right here, cast down all imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So you've got to know that you know that you know that you know that he is who he say he is. So any time that something, a thought comes, you said, but that's not bigger than my God that I serve. That's not bigger than the God that I serve. That's not bigger than the God that I serve. That's not bigger than the God that I serve. That the God that I serve is faithful. The God that I serve is mighty. The God that I serve is a great God. The God that I serve will do exactly what he says he's going to do. So I need to call on the God that I know that is able, that he is almighty God, and he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think, and there is no failure in him. So when I begin 
to get fearful. I say, but God, I know, God, that you told me, God, God, to do this, God. And, and God, I know that you're able, God, to, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think, God. Help me, Lord, God, to, to look to you, the author and the finisher of my faith, God. Help me to look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from you. I know you as a mountain mover, God. And not only will you move the mountains, you have given me the authority to speak to the mountain, and it shall be moved into yonder sea. So I am not going to, I'm not going to stay here with this doubt in my mind because I know that it's just here to stagnate me and, and cause me to procrastinate and cause me not to be all that you call me to be. So God, I Ha, huh, yea, God, I thank you that we're going to, when those thoughts come and those doubts, but I can do all things through Christ. If you got to skip through the house, that's what I just saw. I saw somebody skipping through the house. They said, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can, I can, I can, and I will. Oh, glory to God. See, we got to, we can't, see, sometimes what we do is when those thoughts come, that we, we just embrace those things, but you've got to be able to recognize the thoughts that are coming. Are they your thoughts or are they thoughts by the enemy? And if they're the enemy, then we say not so. But even if it's within us, then we've got to go to another place, and that's in the God that we serve, who is a mighty God. So tonight, no more, no more. Over in 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, it says, For I determine, hallelujah, not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. As Paul said, that's all I know. Because why he could say that? Because he knew that that was the truth of the matter. See, sometimes because we are intelligent creatures and, and we know some stuff, but let me say this. You do not know it like God know it. You do not. Some things we need to just uh, abandon what we think we know, and we need to get into the word of God and allow him to show us the truth of the matter. So when those thoughts come, no, uh, uh, mm, mm. See, I, I do that kind of stuff. I know it sounds strange, but I walk around the house, go, uh, uh, mm, mm, no, 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 we ain't going there today. I'm not thinking that. I'm not. See, I can identify what I'm thinking and what the enemy is trying to bring. No, uh, uh, I'm not even thinking that. We ain't going there today. No, I am going to be all that that God has called me to be. I may be shaking in my boots, but I'm going to say, but but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because if He calls it, then He's gonna give me the strength to make it come to pass. So if you're you've been having some of those toxic thoughts, but I can and I I don't know and I'm scared and I'm doubtful and and what if this don't work and and those people said that I'd never be anybody and those people said that it, it wasn't gonna come to pass, but but tonight no more no more close the door on those toxic thoughts because you shall be. You shall be all that God has called you to be. You have purpose and you have destiny. You wouldn't be upon the earth unless God set a purpose in you. And even before you even came to him, he still sent his son to hang and die for you because he knew that you would need him in this hour. So you have, like I used to say sometimes, I don't have a clue, God. He said, stop saying that, Shirley. You have more than a clue. You have me. And if you have me, you have everything that you need. So if you're, you're having those toxic thoughts tonight, write on your paper, no more, no more. I am casting down everything, and I'm going to look to the God of the hills. I'm going to look to the God of my salvation. I'm going to look to the one, thank you, Lord, that one that, 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 that took me out of the, the clinches of the enemy. Now, some of us, including myself, have been in some holes, some nasty, rotten, dirty places, but glory to God that if he can take us out of those places and place our feet on a solid rock, don't tell me what God won't do right now. When I'm trying to give him the best of me, if he can take me out of the, the pit of hell, then he can put myself on the right path to be able to be what he's called me to be. So tonight, no more, no more, right on that paper, no more toxic thoughts that I am going to be what God has called me to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Relationships, toxic relationships, what do they look like? Those are those relationships and friendships that try to pull us back. They're never encouraging. And when we leave them, we feel like life has sucked out of us. Relationships and friendships that do not respect 
our relationship with God and quietly tries to get us off of our path of righteousness. When you realize that that now that you don't have nothing even in common with, with the folks anymore, our relationships and friendships are not meant to be forever, and we need to know when to stop. We can love folks, we can care for folks, but that don't mean we need to be hanging out over there with them. Hanging with them, and sometimes you're hanging with folk, and I tell them at the church all the time, you're going to be with folk, either they're going to draw you or you're going to draw them, but somebody's going to draw somebody. So you got to know where your strength lies. If you know that you can't go over there, and you know if you go over there that they are stronger than you right right now. You heard me what I said. I said right now they're strong, but you don't need to be over there. You don't need to be hanging out with them if it's going to cause you to get in a place that you don't need to be. That we have to be able to, to love people, but we don't have to bring them to our bosom. I love you. I can love you from afar. I can love you and never be with you. Because if I know that that, that relationship is not good for me, then, then I'm not going to pull you to my bosom. I'm not going to allow you to get in my inner court. I'm not going to allow you to, to get into my space. See, we've got to allow God to, to choose, and we got to allow God to, to, to tell us the truth of the matter. You know, when you're with people sometimes, and everybody, you know, you can give out a lot to people, but sometimes people are not ready to change their lives. So I can tell you and tell you and tell you and tell you, and then tomorrow – I'm going to tell you again, I'm going to share with you in two weeks, I'm, but you still, we're still dealing with the same issue because you're not really ready to change. So when I leave you after a while, I feel like I've been in a, in a battle. I don't, you don't suck the life out of me because why? Because I'm not getting anything from that relationship. All it's doing is drawing from me. So you have to, you have to realize when, when to pull out and when to pull back. Don't be in a relationship with somebody who does not respect your walk with the Lord. Where, you know, you're in a situation, ladies, and you're in a situation, and men too for that matter. Let me thank you, Lord, for correcting that. Men and women, you're in a relationship and you're trying to live holy, and, and the person that you're hanging out with, they're trying to get you to do some ungodly things. Well, well, I gotta, I gotta make a decision that every time I'm with you, I gotta fight you off, or I, I gotta go through a struggle. Then I don't need to be with you. But we gotta, and see, sometimes we we keep hanging in there like that because, well, what if this is my last opportunity? Then that's a lie from the pit of hell. God is not going to put anybody in your life that will cause you to to compromise the very principles of God. So. So you you got to make some decision as far as, am I going to stay here? Am I going to allow that person to suck the life out of me? Am I going to be in a relationship where there's we have nothing in common? You know how you run into some old, some old friends, and by the time you just say, well, how's your mother? You know, well, how's your sister? You ain't got nothing else to talk about because your life has went one way and their life has went another way. But you got to recognize that. Amos 3, 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? How can we be, how can we how can we be that close in a relationship if I'm over here trying to live holy and righteous and you're over there doing that now I should be able to to give a word if you're if if, if you're saying tell me Shirley how you how you live in the way you're living but if you just you just trying to get me to to get off the way I'm I'm staying to get over on on your court then I don't need to be over there Psalm 139:14 says I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. We've got to start putting value on our own selves. Don't look to somebody who saying, well, you pretty, you handsome, look at them biceps, excuse me, look at those thighs. What is that? That will get us in a hole. That is nothing that has to do with the spirit of God. So we've got to put value on our own self. People say, well, you, you should be glad I'm with you. Ain't nobody else. What is that? No, the blood of Jesus. God loves me. I am a royal priesthood. I am heir to the throne of grace. I am joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I don't need to be uh, given any praises from man like that, but, but as long as my God loves me, then I know that everything's going to be okay. Over in Ruth, Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. And remember when Ruth and Oprah they had the opportunity when Naomi was going back to her homeland, and they both had the opportunity to, to go with her, 
But Oprah was like, no, <laughs> I don't know nothing about your God, and, and I know, you know, my people are not necessarily righteous people, but I know these people. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go back to what I know. And see, we got to be very careful that we don't begin to choose based on what you know. But Oprah, uh, but Ruth took the, the, the deal, and what did she say? She said to Ruth, she said, entreat me not to leave thee or return from following after thee, for where, where, where thy goeth, I will go, and where thy lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thy dieth will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Oh, glory to God. What did she say? She said, now here, she didn't know anything about these people. She, she seen some things with her mama-in-law, and she said, I know that they do idol worship back here, but I've seen you, Naomi. I've seen you when you lost your husband. I've seen you when you lost your two boys. I've seen you how you cried at night, how you called out Jehovah. I, 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 re, I remember that. And, and so I, I want to I wanna, I wanna experience that. So you've got to make some decisions. Oprah couldn't make the decision. She had to go back to the idolatry that she was brought up in. But Ruth said, I'm going to something new. So you have to you have to make some decisions of which way are you going to go? Are you going to stay in a toxic relationship? Are you willing to believe God to put you in a place that's pleasing to him? Over in Luke six forty five it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. Out of the heart of man, his mouth speaketh. And see, what we have to do in these relationships, you know how we do. Well, I, heard, I, I this is what they said, but I didn't really think that's what they meant. We've got to do get to a place to trust what you hear and not try to interpret what you hear. What they say is what they mean. Well, maybe I thought I could change somebody's mind, and it's three years later, and they still talking the same yet. So you ain't changed nobody, but you have held yourself up thinking that you can change it based on what you want and not what they want. And I'm not talking just 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 sexual a relationship or man and woman. I'm talking about any relationship. If people say it, that's why now when people make threats, they they take it to the authority because they don't know what people are going to do. People used to be like, well, I didn't think they were going to do that, and they go and shoot up everybody. So now what they do is if you act like you're going to do something, they take it to the authority. So we have to get to a place where we're trusting what God tells us about these relationships and get out of them and be what God has called us to be, not toxic. So if that's you. If you know that you're in a situation that you need to come out of, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a relationship, whatever it may be that's just draining you, beating you up, making you feel bad when you leave the person's presence, put on a piece of paper, no more. No more. No more am I going that route. Okay, let's move on. Actions and behavior that is toxic. Those, re- those actions, when we were, if we are honest with ourselves and we, and we really evaluate our life before Christ, our actions were toxic to us. And they were to others. We were being ruled by our flesh and spiritually dead and on our way to hell. But now we've been forgiven of our actions and we've been given the Holy Spirit to teach and guide us into a righteous life. But how do we keep the process moving forward and not backwards or willing to let go and do something different? There are things we have to understand that, that when we came, when we were in the world, I'm, I'm going to speak for, I, I, I don't mind speaking about myself. I was in some dark places, some nasty places, some places that were ruling my flesh, but I thank God for forgiveness tonight, hallelujah, that he brought me out of the clutches of the enemy. He took me out of the path of hell. So what am I doing now? Am I going to continually lean back and go back and, and, and understand that the actions that we do, whatever you do, if, if it doesn't produce something different, then why do we keep doing the same thing? Whatever you do, the same way is going to produce the same actions. And so we have to get before God and allow him to show us the things that are unpleasing unto him and that gets in the way. We can't do the same stuff and act the same way and never, and never do it the way God does it. Because what's going to happen is we're going to fall in a hole and we're going to be in a hole. So God comes to see about us. 
Over in Psalm 139, 23 to 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, I thought this was interesting. The Lord said to me, he said, now, you go for a physical examination. You do your mammogram. You do other tests that you have to do. You go to the dentist to do your six-month checkup. He said, now, we do those physical exams. He said, but, but, but do we do an exam of where we are in the spirit? Hallelujah. I said, okay, God, I got you. He said, you, you, you get in the word. You say, search me, oh, God. Show me the things that, that get in the way, God, those things that are unpleasing unto you, those things that, that cause me, Father God, to, to be toxic, that, that, that it, it, I, I can't move forward because I'm, I'm doing the things that are unrighteous and I'm doing the things that, that are unpleasing unto you. Over in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Have you ever ran in, into people that you've known like back in high school and they still doing the same thing that they, they've done all their lives? Nothing has changed. I don't want to be in that realm. But know that if you don't allow God to take your life over, that there are some things that you're going to be doing that you've always done. But he said that, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things. He didn't say some things. He said all things are becoming new. You know, so you can take stock tonight. Am I still, am I still doing the stuff I did 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Am I still doing that same old stuff? Because if you really look at it, you'll see that it ain't producing nothing worth anything. So why am I going to stay there? And a lot of times we stay there because we are saved of what's forward. You know that's bad, but at least you know how we say, at least I know that's bad, but I don't know what's before me. But I can tell you tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Lord God, that whatever God has for you ahead of you, God, like he told me, baby, I'll go with you. I've already mapped your life out. If you hang on to me, hold on to my hand, I'll show you where every pitfall is. I'll show you the seed of the enemy. I'll show you what you need to do to be all that I've, I've called you to do. Over in Galatians 4 and 9, it says, But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, turn you again to weak and beggarly elements, where unto you you desire to be. He's talking about, okay, once God comes and gets you and, and we commit ourselves to him, but then we don't allow the Holy Spirit to take us and change our lives. It is not enough when you... When you give your life and you come for salvation, that puts you at the door. You're at the door. You're at the door. But now life's got to be changed. And some of the things that we've got, now sometimes God will change stuff quick. But there's some things, and let me say that I said this to them on Sunday, ain't none of us got no halos and we ain't got no wings. So there's going to be a working, a purging in us until we leave here. But we got to let the work start and, and give God permission. Holy Spirit, I give you permission to rule and abide in my day and in my life, to move those things out of the way that will get in the way and cause my life not to be what you called it to be. So if you're looking for something to change in your life, check out what you're doing. Am I doing the same things? Do I still have the same mindset? Do I still have the same relationships? Do I still do the same? Because we are creatures of habit. We are creatures of habit. We will go on automatic pilot at a drop of a hat, and we look up, and it's 10 years later, and we're doing the same things. But God says that old things will pass away. I'm looking for some new stuff. Hallelujah. When he said, I'm going to have a new life, and I, I so remember. That's why I'm excited about this tonight, because God told me that when I left Philadelphia, before I left Philadelphia, it's been now, what, 22, 22 years, 22 years. Yeah, 22 years, this past July. And I remember him saying to me, but I am going to give you a new life. Well, I didn't understand what that really meant, but I know that things were going to change. 
And here I was living in Philadelphia. All I knew was Philadelphia. My family was there. My mother was there. That's all I knew, born and raised in Philadelphia. And now God is saying, I'm going to give you a new life. I'm going to take you from Philadelphia to Virginia where you don't know nobody. You don't even have a job. Hallelujah. But you're going to go with these two boys, my two younger children, and you're going to, you're going to start a new life. And not only are you going to start a new life, you're going to go to Virginia, and the only thing that you're going to take are the clothes in a suitcase. Don't tell me what God won't do when we allow him to be the Lord of our lives. God said, take the sons, take some clothes in a suitcase. Didn't even have a car. Didn't even see the apartment before I moved into the apartment. I called the lady about an apartment because now, you know, if you're going with clothes, you won't have no furniture. So now I've got to find a place to live that has furniture, a furnished apartment. So I call around down here and I scout out the land, and the lady says to me, I don't, I don't, I don't do this, miss, because you don't even have a job. But if you can show me before you arrive that you have enough money to pay for at least two months so that I don't have to put you and your boys out on the street, I will approve your application. I don't know you, lady. That's what she says to me. But I just feel that I need to do that for you. But don't tell me. Oh, hallelujah. Don't tell me what, what the favor of God won't do. Don't tell me if God says that he's given you a new life, that you don't have to keep doing the same thing. Try God. Let God orchestrate your life. So here we move. Here we move. I don't have a car. I get on a train. I'm, the money doesn't come until 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning for me to leave. i got to go across town to deposit the money in the bank so that I can fax her a copy of my bank statement saying that I have X amount of money to at least pay for two months. So I get back across town. My train leaves at 2 o'clock. I'm supposed to be on the train. I had already packed our stuff at the door, had cleaned out as much as I could the house, but we were ready to go, packed, ready to go, made a reservation because God said in July of 1993, you are going to get a new life. So my bags are packed at the door. I have no money, but the money comes at 10. I go across town. I get back just in time. I'm trying to call to see whether I can get somebody to take me to the train station, and, and nobody's available. He said, take a cab to the train station, but you leave out of this house, and you leave now. I get my two boys with our suitcases, and we go to the train station, and we, we get there about a half an hour before the train is about to pull off. My brother comes to the train station. Some of you heard my story. My brother comes to the train station, and he says there, he looks at me, he brings me flowers, and he says, Mom's not liking this. I said, I know. I called her, and she's crying, saying, Baby, why you got to go so far, and how you going to live? You don't even have a job, and how you going to feed those boys? I said, but, Mommy, I got to trust God. I got to go. Mommy, don't cry like this. I've got to go. I will call you when I reach. I hung up on my own mother because why? I couldn't allow anything or anybody to hinder me from going forth to my new life. Don't tell me what God won't do. My brother gives me flowers. He says, you go and do what God told you to do. I'll take care of Mom. We get down here. I get a job, and a week after I got here, the same job that I, that I just retired from last year that I got a week when I got here. Don't tell me what God won't do when God says that he's given us a new life. Change some of, Let God change your actions. Let God deliver you. Let God show you the new things that he has for your life. Oh, glory to God. That's why I'm excited about my life. Because I've seen God do matchless things. Now, just, just think about it. If I had stayed in Philadelphia, would I be on Lifeline tonight? Would I be on this broadcast tonight? I would have never met Reverend Ray. I would have ne never met Reverend Pat Randall. I wouldn't have met none of the people at Rehoboth. I don't know where my life would be, but it wouldn't be what it is today. But God knew where he had my blessings stored up for me, and it wasn't in Philadelphia. It was to move to Virginia, and now I live in Maryland. 
The church is in Maryland. Don't tell me what God won't do. So if you, 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 you're one of those people tonight that have those toxic actions, you're just doing what you're used to doing. You're doing what you know to do. But I, I, I tell you tonight, trust God and let God work out your actions and your behavior. So if you're one of those tonight, you put on your paper, no more, no more. Tonight I am going to allow God to lead me and guide me. I'm going to allow God to, 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 to lead me and search me out and examine who I am and whose I am tonight. Glory to God. Oh, God, we thank you tonight. Oh, he's an awesome God. He wants great things for us. He wants to move the toxic things out of our lives so that we can be all that he's called us to be. And what happens? I want to, what happens now when, when we have examined ourselves and, we, and, and we're implementing the process to rid us of the toxicity in our lives and we've even tried, some of us say, well, I tried, and, but, I, but I fell back, and, and then somebody called me, and I was re- coerced back, and I, I couldn't see myself forward, so I went, I went backwards. That happens sometimes, but let me say this, that I'm going to give you a couple of things that will help you maintain your position. Oh, glory to God. Tell yourself this morning, this evening, that I'm going to maintain. I, I won't be moved. I won't go back. I'm going to go forward and be all that God has called me to be. When we're talking about maintaining, maintaining means to, to care or, or keep up, to keep in existence, to go forward, to retain, to keep unimpaired, to stay in a position, to assert, to declare. So, so once we identify those areas, but once we, we implement some changes according to the word of God that we read tonight, but how do we stay there? You know those days when you hear a word and, and you're like, oh, I got this. I'm good today. All right now. And then a week later, two weeks later, two months later, the thing that we were struggling with that we said we got, it shows back up again. Those days when we're two, day, two steps up and we go three steps back. How do we maintain? How do I how do I stay there? Sometimes people ask me, Well, Pastor, how do I how do I stay there? The Lord gave me a, a maintenance program that I want to share quickly with you guys tonight. Now we've identified, you got your paper, we've identified. You should in your paper, you should have, okay, that's me, that's me, and that's me. But no more, no more. And now I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna apply the the word, the scriptures that she gave me tonight, and then I'm gonna meditate on them, but then I'm gonna maintain, be maintained. So this is some of the things that we need to do to maintain. We must stay in the word. You've got to see. Thank you, Lord. When, you're, when you find yourself falling back, falling off, being called out, going backwards, you have to identify what area of my life takes me off my game. Write that on your paper. What area of my life happens or what, what, what happens to take me out of my flow? What, what, what gets me not to be where I need to be? Well, one of the things, we've got to stay in the Word. We've got to stay in the Word. Remember I said early on that when Jesus was in the wilderness, he didn't say nothing cute. He didn't try to do nothing cute. What he said was, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You have got to stay in the Word. The Word is what's going to keep you. I remember early on, Running the ch- literally, literally now, the church is around the corner, and those Sundays when I'd be like, oh, I'm tired, or Wednesday, oh, I'm tired, I'm not going to go. And before I knew it, I was putting on my shoes, and I was running around, boys, y'all got something to eat, here's dinner, you know, we already did homework, but I'm going to Bible study, I'll, I'll be back. And then on Sundays, we all go, we all go, because I needed the word. It was the word, because I didn't think I would ever be okay. Here I was, was just a mess, a mess. But the more I got the word, it was like a blood transfusion. So you cannot afford not to be in the word. The word is what gives life to us. Right now at church, we're on year five reading from Genesis to Revelation. And I just told them last week, some of them might have fell off, but I said you got two months before the year is over. I'd rather you read with me for two months than read not at all. Because the minute you start reading consistently, that it's going to strengthen you and cause you to be maintained. You can't stay your position without the word. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. And I heard this prophet say the other night, he says, when you talk about the word being a lamp, now imagine this, when you walk into a room and you turn on a lamp, that lamp gives you light for where you are. It doesn't, it may shine a little bit into the next room, but the, the, the bulk of the light is in the room where you are. So if a lamp is a light unto my feet, the lamp of the word will show me where I am. Hallelujah. It will show me where I am. And a lot of times we, we assume where we are, but let the word find you out. Let the word find you out. Good, bad, ugly, and stupid. But let the word find you out so that you'll know what you need to do and what you need to do before the almighty God. But it says uh, the, the word is a lamp unto my feet. It will show me where am I standing at because it, it, it illuminates my position where I'm at. And how can we go forth if we don't even know where we're standing at? You know, because you're going to try to go forth and you ain't, you ain't equipped. You're not ready. It's not your time. It's not your season. So you've got to allow the word to find you out so that you'll know where you are before you can even go forward. But it says this is a light unto my path. So what happens is as you begin to walk forward, the word, it said it's a light unto my path. It's like I see lights on the side of a path, and it, it illuminates to show me where I was going. So like when I was moving here, every, every, every aspect of my move, God would give me a glimpse of what I needed to do or tell me what I needed to do. People would say, I would say, yeah, well, I'm getting ready to move. Well, where you move? I don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know? He ain't told me that yet. Well, when you're moving, he ain't told me that either. But why are you throwing out things in the house? Because I'm moving. Why are you, why are you doing? Because I'm moving. I'm moving because he kept telling me what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. So we have to get in the word and allow the word to be a, a lamp unto my feet. Show me where I'm at. Show me where I'm at. I don't want to assume that I'm okay, that I'm all jacked up. Show me where I'm at so that I'll be ready to go forth when the path is open for me. James 1, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. we got to get in the word, the word. We can't just be hearers of the word. You know how sometimes you go to church and you, hear, you see somebody and they say, Well, how was service today? And somebody will say, Oh, it was a good word. Well, what they talk about, girl, I don't know. I don't know. what. I just know it was a good word. We shouted. We fell out. But what did they talk about? Did you come away with anything that can help you tomorrow? Is it? Did you come away with anything that could help you when you get home to that situation? Well, you know, I, I, we just had fun. We just had a good time. It was just, you know, it was just, no, no. That's why I'm a firm believer that the word's got to be a practical word. It's got to be, well, how? Let me get in the word and find out how am I going to deal with my children? How, what am I going to do with, with my unforgiving spirit? Because I had to go through all that. I was, first I was bitter, then I was angry, then I was mad, then I was just pissed off, and then I was just tolerant of people. And God said, all of that got to go, Shirley. I cannot use you like that. So he had to clean me up. He had to show me who I was, and then rid me of those things so that I could walk in forgiveness first of myself and then for those that I thought had wronged me, but not understanding that even those that I thought had wronged me actually pushed me to where I need to be, and that was in the face of God. So we can't just be hearers of the word, but we can be doers. You know, and in Christendom, we, you know, we have a lot of cliches and things. You know, you can tell there's periods that we go through that we all say in the same thing. Yeah, I'm highly favored. And then we go home and we cry ourselves to sleep. So did you really, do you really believe that? You've got you to gotta get into the word until it becomes a rhema for you, until it becomes living to you, until it becomes life to you, until it moves those things out of the way that you can stand assured that what the word says is the word. He says that my word would not come back void that it shall accomplish what I've sent it out to do and whom I sent it to do it in. So if God is sending a word, then he said it ain't going to come back void because if he says go, go down to Broad Street and meet Shirley and, and give her this, well, everything obeys God. Ha, 
Oh, yea, God, I thank you. Everything that hears its name that deals with my blessing, when God says go meet her and go give that to her, then it shows up to give it to me, and then it can report back that I was there, but she wasn't there, God. I don't want to be. I want to be where God says I need to be so I can get what God says. So the word's got to be living unto us. So your maintenance program, make sure you're writing that down. You've got to stay in the word. You may be tired. You may be sleepy. You may be a lot of things, but you've got to find time to get in the word. I ain't slapping law on nobody. I'm not saying you've got to read for four hours a day. I didn't say that. What I said was, but you've got to stay in the word. You've got to get in the word. You find, we find time to do everything else. You know, you could at lunchtime eat a sandwich and read your word. Get up five, ten minutes early in the morning. Stay up a little later at night, but you're not going to maintain unless you get into the word. We must pray. Another part of our maintenance program, we must pray. We must pray. We must pray. Mark fourteen thirty eight says, Watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready but the flesh is weak. The flesh is willing, but the flesh is weak. Puts no confidence over in uh, oh yeah, Philippians 3, 3, it says, and have no confidence in the flesh. I already know what my flesh like. That's where I was living before. I know what my flesh is capable of doing. I know what my, my flesh rather do. The flesh, the flesh does not want to do the things of God. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't want to. It doesn't want to do the things of God. It's an enemy towards the things of God. So we've got to get to a place where we're praying and submitting ourselves, so that our spirit will be the most dominant spirit within us, and tell the flesh, "Not so. I'm going to pray today. I'm going to." Because see, that's where you get your strength in prayer. Remember, if Jesus, remember Jesus. Jesus would be praying. He would leave. He would leave the guys, and he would go in the mountain, and he would pray. And even before the crucifixion, remember, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said he was like he was feeling feeling in his flesh because he knew now that that he would be separated from God, and he he never experienced that before. It wasn't so much that he was afraid to be crucified. He knew why he was coming and why he had to go. But now I'll be separated from my Father. So he said, "But if this cup could pass." But he said, not my will, nevertheless, ha, yea, God, nevertheless, not my will, but let thy will be done. So when we're at that place where we're fainting, I don't know, I, I feel like I want to go back, and I feel like, you know, they calling me, and, and I, don't, I don't know, and I don't know, and I don't know. But how you do know is on your face, on your face before God, getting before him and speaking to him. Uh, Luke 18, 1 says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. So when you're feeling like you're about to faint, then you got to get on your face. Oh, this thing is trying to trip me up. It's trying to grab me by my ankles. But no, uh -uh. I'm going to maintain my way before the Lord. I'm going to be before him and allow me to stay where I need to stay. The changes, things that, we, that we've that we learned, we've got to allow them these things to become lifestyles. You know how we... We, we've learned to pray and to read and to fast, and then all of a sudden we just stop doing all of it. You can't. This is, life. this is life in the kingdom, and you have to do these things until we leave here. Remember Daniel and the three Hebrew boys when they had, they had a, a way of living that they knew that they weren't going to, to worship idol gods. They knew they weren't going to eat their food because they, were, they had a conviction of, of what their lifestyle was. And they were like, throw me in the furnace. But we won't worship your God. We don't want your food. We don't want your meat. We don't want your wine. We're going we're gonna to live the way God has, has told us to live. So you've got to maintain your, your way. Whatever you have learned that works, then stick to that thing. Because that's what they did. Throw me in the furnace. But, but I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to believe God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight says, Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, steadfast, unmovable, don't be moved. Do what you know works so that you can be maintained in your freedom. Two more things in our maintenance program. We have to renew the renewing of our minds, renewing of our minds. Remember, I talked about that a little before, about casting down all vain imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We have to renew our minds daily, daily. You know, we spend so much time 
on, if we would spend as much time as we do in keeping up with the reality shows and, and, and all the things that we're watching on television, if we would spend as much time renewing our minds before God, then, then, then we can maintain some freedom and some liberty. Because a lot of that, that stuff ain't real. It's not real. It's not real. But I want to I wanna deal. That's why I'm very careful even now with Periscope. I, I, I only watch things or listen to broadcasts that's going to feed my spirit or it has something to do with business or, or but, but all, some of that stuff they be talking about. I don't want to know what you ate for dinner. I can care less what you bought at the grocery store. That means nothing to me. So you got to determine what, when you realize you're fighting for your life, you're fighting to maintain your freedom, then there's certain things that you're not going to do. Because God has given us an expected, he said you have an expected end. So I have to constantly remind myself, but girl, you got some place to be. You can't be playing around and lollygagging. You got some place to be. So that's what you have to remember. And one other thing in the program, we got to stay, we got to stay put. John 15, 4 says, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing, nothing. We have to, we have to stay before the almighty God. This is not the time to, to go hither and thither and we're going to go over here and we're going to do that. No, we can't do anything outside of the almighty God. And we have to remind ourselves where we need to stay put. It was one scripture that over in the Message Bible, uh, Proverbs 5 eight, was talking about the adulterous woman, the harlot. And it, and, it, and it says to them in 5 eight, and I thought this was awesome, it says, keep your distance from such a woman, woman, especially absolutely stay out of her neighborhood. Now, let me, let me, let, let me, just, let me just work that for just one second. They're talking about if you know that that is a weakness of yours, and, and, and you know that you have scoped that that thing ain't going to work for you, then why are you going to go over there? Stay out the neighborhood. Stay out that arena. Stay out that. Don't even, don't even, don't even mess with that. I used to hear my, my bishop say before, he said, he used to say, a good, a good, how did he go? A good run beats a poor stance any day. You know how we say, well, I got this. I'm good. I'm cool. And then you go over there and you get all jacked up because you thought you was able. You ain't got nothing for the enemy. So we've got to get to a place that we're staying put. So, so when, we, we, when, we, when we find ourselves being free, I want to remain free. So this, so this day we've talked about tonight, hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, and I thank you. He has told us how we can better ourselves, get rid of that toxic stuff that's in our lives, that we can, can, can uh, get rid of those things, those toxic thoughts, those toxic relationships, those toxic actions that we have. But then if we just give ourselves over to him, if we stay in that word, if we stay in prayer, if we learn and do the things that we've learned from the very beginning and stay there, if we renew our mind and if if we stay put, not trying to go over here and go over there, but I need to stay, hallelujah, I need to stay in the throne room. There is a seat, hallelujah, that he's told me that I have in the heavenlies, and I can sit with him and have relationship and fellowship with him so that I can be all that I'm called to be, that I may walk in purpose and I may walk in destiny. So God has given us a lot to think about this, this, this evening. I hope that you guys took some notes. I hope you identified where you are. I hope that you identified what throws you off of, off of your post. What is it that causes me to stop reading, to stop praying? What causes me not to renew my mind? What causes me... To, to leave the place of comfort with the Almighty God. So those are the things I want you guys to think about. Think about those things because God wants the best for us. I want the best for all of us. I don't know about you, but I want to be all that God has for me. I want to experience the greatness and the love and the majesty and the power of the Almighty God. And that God would even raise up lifeline tonight. God, I thank you. That God would raise up lifeline tonight to tell us and to remind us how much he loves us. And, and giving us instructions, practical instructions, so that we, in his word, practical instructions, that we can have life and we can have life more abundantly. So, Father, I thank you tonight. Father, I glorify you. God, I magnify you, God. Oh, God, that your word is sure, God, that your word is powerful, God. 
and that you love us so much, God, that tonight you come, Father God, that we may find ourselves out, God. Oh, God, that we don't have to, Father God, live in a, in a place that we don't know where we are, God. And, 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 and when we identify it, God, you've given us, God, your word, God, to apply it to those situations, God. You've given us a maintenance plan, God, that how we can remain free, God. So I pray tonight, God, oh, God, that you would bless your people, God. Oh, God, that they will go back and read the word, God, read the scriptures, God, that they will identify and be honest with themselves, God, and they will look to you, the author and the finisher of, of their faith, God. They'll look to you, God, oh, the one that has destiny and purpose in your hand for them, God, that you would do it for them, God. God, I pray tonight, God, that you would bless these, your people, God. God, I bless you for this opportunity and all that you shall do, God, on the upcoming months with Lifeline, God. I thank you. God, I bless you, Lord, and I honor you, God. I bow before you tonight, oh, God. I am so grateful, God, so very grateful, God, so very grateful for this opportunity, God, that you now may bless your people, God. Bless your people, bless your people, bless your people, bless your people, and bless your people. God, I thank you, and I bless you and I honor you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen, and amen, amen. At this time, I'm going to, to ask Reverend Rose, uh, is there any prayer requests, anything? Did we get anything in the uh, chat room tonight? Um, no, ma'am, we didn't. There's no prayer requests. Okay, amen, yet. amen, 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 amen. So what I want to do then uh, tonight is I want to, I never take anything for granted, uh, never take anything for granted. You never know who's on the line. Everybody may be on the line, may not be, may be believers. So what I want to do is I'm just going to, to say that in order to get rid of the toxic things in your life, in order to maintain that you must, you must, there's no getting around it, you must have a relationship with God. My life was jacked up. I am the first one to tell you, jacked up and messed up. But I thank God that he called me unto himself and has changed my life. Perfect? No. I'm a perfect person needing a perfect God. See, that's the thing that we have to understand, that we are imperfect people that need a perfect God. So if you're on this, on this broadcast tonight and you have never asked Jesus Christ to come and take your life over so that he can help you get rid of those toxic things in your life and to help you maintain a freedom and liberty that you have never experienced before, like I said, I wouldn't trade my journey for anything. Have I always won things? No. Have I lost precious things? Yes. But I thank God that through it all, that through even the losses, God has been my stay. And he has showed me that he loves me and that he'll always be with me. So if you're on the line tonight and you have not asked Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior, I ask that you would just repeat after me. God, I, I, at first I ask for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness and I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I'm asking today that you would forgive me and that you would come into my heart and take my life over. That I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose on the third day. And I believe that I can have life in you. And because of you, my life can change. So I ask that you would forgive me of my sins and that you would take my life and make it new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God, I ask for that person or persons, God, that have said that tonight. I pray that your hand would be upon them. God, I pray that you would fill them with your presence and that, God, that you would lead them to a Bible-teaching church that they may grow and that they may become. So, God, we thank you tonight, and we bless you, and we honor you. If there's anyone on the line that has actually said the prayer of repentance and asked God to take your life over uh, I want to know about it. I want to know about it. That's exciting stuff. Because, see, when you give your life over to God, the angels, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. I'm really over here about to, about to kick my feet up and down already from the very beginning. <laughs> but I'm excited about that. So if, you, if you've asked God to take your life over or you, you've asked God before and you kind of fell off the wagon and you're asking God now to forgive you and you want to come back, then I want you to send me, send me an email. And I'm going to give you my email address. My email address is apostle. S. Jones at Rehoboth, R E H O B O T H, F. S. and Frank, L. C. dot org. I'm going to give that again. Apostle S. Jones at Rehoboth, R E H O B O T H, 
flc.org. And I want to hear, I want to hear, if you were on the line tonight and you said, you know, I've decided that I'm tired of living the way I'm living, and, I, and I've, I've said the sinner's prayer, and I, I want you to know about it, and I want to be able to send you some additional information and just get to know you and, and talk to you. So if you're that one, I want you, or ones, I want you to send me an email. Anybody else that's on the line that you might not have been able to get into the chat room tonight and you have maybe a question or a comment, something that you want to say to me, then I ask that you please feel free to contact me on my email address. I thank you guys tonight. I am, I am, I am. I probably won't be able to sleep tonight. I'm just too excited. <laughs> I'm just all wired right now for sure. But I thank you guys. I am so grateful for all of you for hanging out with me this evening. And I, and I pray that something that you've heard will bring about change in your life. And and I and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pray even right now I'm gonna pray that that your life there will be blessings upon your life and destiny and purpose will be your portion and that you will be blessed and you enjoy your time with the Lord in Jesus' name. Now I want you to we do this for me as well. When I'm, when I'm gonna close this out in prayer, I want you to don't forget. I want you to join me next month. It's the first Monday of every month. I'm going to be doing Lifeline Broadcasting, and uh, it's going to be at 7 o'clock, the same time, the same connection that you got in on tonight. But tell some folks, tell some folks, if you've been blessed by the broadcast tonight, I want you to spread the word. Tell some folks about the first Monday of every month. Let some folks know about, I've given you the information for our Bible study at our church, for Hope Family Life Center, also the 5 a.m. prayer that we do on Thursday. I've given you that information as well. Uh, but join us, join us, but let, get the word out. And uh, I believe also that there is a, you can actually go to, I believe they said it's when Christians, when Christians yeah. speak, okay, when Christians speak, uh, and get the, can you get that address where they can go to Facebook for me, Reverend Ray? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can um, go to when Christians speak, uh, talk radio. Amen. We have all kinds of information and links. And also that is another method you can get in contact with uh, 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 Apostle Shirley that way. And we will forward any information uh, directly to her also. Okay. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, so there, there you can also listen to uh, the broadcast uh, later. You can actually let other people know that there's a, uh, a way to listen to it. You can hear the message even after we're done. And you can let people know about that. I know you can go to the link and it'll show you different ways that you can uh, you can hear the message. So I'm asking you to do that as well. But share the word. Share the word. If you've been blessed tonight, then I want you to share the word. I, I've been blessed. I, I've been blessed, and I take it as an honor and a privilege tonight uh, to be able to come before you and just deliver the, the word that God has given for his people because he loves us. He loves us. And I want you to know how much he does love each one of us. And the fact that I love you, too, and I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for hanging out with me with the birthing of, of Lifeline. I am so grateful, and I'm so excited, and I look forward to all that God is going to do. So I'm just going to close this out in prayer. I pray you have a, a good rest of, of the evening, and, uh, you know, look over, look over, find yourself what you wrote. No more. What's those places that you said no more about? Then you get before God in prayer. Don't forget your maintenance program. Once you identify what that is, your maintenance program is you got to stay in the Word, stay in prayer, stay in things that you've learned, stay before Him, and renew your mind. And you see, and you see what God will do. Great and mighty things. God is calling His people forth to purpose and destiny. Some of us are on the line that have you have so many gifts and so many talents in you, but you've got to let God do it. Because when, you know, I, I preached on Sunday, you know, we could have the gift, but we also have to have their integrity. The gift will make room for us, but the integrity will keep us in the room. So we have to get before God. That's part of our maintenance. We've got to get before God so that he can keep us in everything that he does. So, Father, tonight, God, I bless you, God, and I honor you. I pray tonight, God, that you would bless these, your people. I pray that, God, that they would have found a place tonight, that, Father, God, that the word would find them out and that the word of God would be a, a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. And, God, that they shall be all that they're called to be. So, God, I thank you tonight, and I bless you, God. I pray that you would just bless, God, uh, Reverend 
Ray Rose and Pat, Reverend Pat Randall, God, for all that they do. God, I pray for the broadcast that, Father God, that they, Father God, would increase, God, for everything that they have done and they continue to do. I pray that they will increase. I pray that the that the radio board station should, should increase, God, that you would open up other doors and other avenues, God, that, that they would take, you would even take them to another level in you, God. God, the things, God, that you have for them, God, I pray that, God, you would uncover it quickly and that they would know about it, God. So we thank you, Lord, God. We thank you, Lord, that, that you've raised up this broadcast to be able, God, to spread the gospel, God, not for, for nonsense, but to spread the gospel that a man's life can change and somebody gets saved, somebody can get delivered, somebody can know that they can make it because of you. <coughs> so we bless you tonight, God. We honor you tonight, God, and we give you praise. I pray blessings upon these, your people, even tonight. Give them sweet sleep. Allow the angels be encamped around their dwelling, and that nothing shall come nigh. So we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name. <coughs> Excuse me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I pray that you guys join me on the first Monday of every month. I look forward to, to hearing from some of you. I've given you my email address. You know, hit me an email. If you have any questions or any comments about the broadcast, I'd love to hear from you. Love you guys and have a great night. God bless you. God bless. Again, everyone, you've been listening to When Christian Speak Talk Radio. This has been Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones. You can listen to Apostle Shirley Jones' uh, rebroadcast through iTunes, through uh, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, or you can always go back to Blog Talk Radio. Y'all have a blessed afternoon. We are signing out, and we'll see you next month. God bless, everyone. Jesus.